Well, thank you for joining me for another ITY.com and Alex on Tech video. I'm joined today by Greg Michelson. He's the General Manager of Banking at Data Robot. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Now, I always like to start at the beginning and just simply ask you to tell us a little bit about how Data Robot started, uh, what you've done over the past few years to evolve to 2018, and um, about your role at the company. Yeah, sure. So uh, we were born out of Traveler's Insurance. That's mm -hmm. where uh, the founders came from. I worked with them while I was there. And uh, they went off and started up Data Robot because what they found was that the solution or the, the, the secret to building really good predictive models is not being an expert in any one kind of approach, mm. right? The, the, the trick is to try everything. But, you know, people are cognitively bound, right? So nobody knows more than, you know, two or three or four or five, a handful of techniques. Sure. So what Data Robot is, is it's a, it's a software program that automates the process of building and tuning uh, predictive models so that you can find the best one. So we founded, or they founded the company in 2012. I joined in 2015. I think I was employee 38, something right. like that. We're up to around 500 now. Uh, which is pretty exciting, yeah. pretty crazy growth for four years. Um, but yeah, so my first, I was the first of what we call customer facing data scientists, mm -hmm. which is uh, other industries call that a technical sales type role. It's mm -hmm. basically working with our customers to make sure that the, whatever they're trying is successful. It's kind of a trusted advisor type, type role, customer sure. facing. And, and data scientists is what Data Robot has. I mean, you've kind of made the data science like sexy because of AI and machine learning. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about like how data scientists have become cool. I mean, not that they have not necessarily ever weren't, but it's like, it's like Revenge of the Nerds sort of thing, you know? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, my first computer was when I was four and a half years old in 1979. So it's like, you know, it's, it's incredible to see the, the, the advances since then. But what's, you know, be, beyond this data scientist thing, I want you to uh, just briefly remark upon. Yeah. What's also Data Robot's definition of AI and how advanced is machine learning today? Yeah, people def people use all these kind of bud buzzwords all over the place mm -hmm. and, and very in a very loosely defined kind of way. Yeah. Um, we define AI very broadly. Uh, we just we say uh, an AI solution is any solution that automates some task that would normally require human intelligence. Yeah. Um, you know, that's not the, the technical definition, right? Where the technical definition is probably closer to a Will Smith movie than, than anything else. Sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for, for the average organization that is trying to monetize their data, we're essentially talking about uh, optimizations, automations, and, and actionable insights, that kind of thing. And, and the data scientists becoming cool? Oh, um, why has it become cool or? Well, I mean, you know, I've read some of the articles about Data Robot, and people are in awe that these are data scientists, and it's like, well, they've been around for a long time, right? It's just that uh, sort of, yeah. You know, it's just that the, the now with AI, machine yeah. learning, blockchain, all these things at the forefront, yeah. and yeah. Uh, changing so many, changing the way that companies do things, right. uh, enabling companies to to automate things that would take so much extra time yep. in human hands, yep. and and leaving humans to do the higher value tasks. I mean, that is that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I got in on it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So when I when I started studying statistics and math, uh, that was before we were called data scientists. What, what was it called back then? Uh, statistician. Okay. Uh, I guess that's kind of your your standard thing. Yeah. The computer scientists got involved, and the models became more uh, more nonlinear and more nonparametric, and and things sort of started to change pretty pretty dramatically. So data science is kind of the convergence of the math and stats mm -hmm. that I kind of grew up in, uh, the computer science, so all the coding, kind of the hardcore uh, software engineering type stuff, plus business expertise. So the reason that the data science profession is so, in demand, I guess, sexy yeah. is <clears throat> that you can't find those people. Yeah, right? they're, they're, so, there's a battle on to, yeah. to get the best ones. Yeah, and I think I read somewhere that the average, <coughs> that the average tenure for a data scientist in the U.S. is nine months. Wow, because they're snapped up by somebody else. Oh yeah, I mean, you work somewhere for nine months, you get a little bit of experience under your belt, and all of a sudden you can change jobs and get 30% more money. Mm. So that's kind of the problem we solve. So it turns out that if you take somebody who knows the business and has some familiar, familiarity with the data, and you give them the tools to 
solve their own problems mm -hmm. that you do something really kind of amazing right and so you know everybody that tries it loves it and it, it's been a wild ride now for some people ai uh, and even machine learning if they're not data scientists i mean it's a bit of a black box and i was at a Thales conference in France, and they were talking about cybersecurity and defending nation states, but they do military and mm. logistics, all sorts of things. But they, the CEO is talking about the concept of explainable AI, where AI yeah. has, if you question it, it's going to be able to give you the, an answer and, and show you how it came to that decision. And so how much uh, of that sort of transparency and thinking is that a robot putting into yeah. um, all of your solution so that when customers want to know and when you want to know i mean facebook had ais talking to each other in their own language they had to sort of <laughs> stop it and get them to yeah. command them to, to speak in english <laughs> yes exactly well over there over in europe it's required by regulation now yeah. uh, so gdpr requires you to explain how your models work and why they're doing what they're doing to the people that are impacted by them uh, that's been required in the u.s for a long time so mm -hmm. if you buy a house in the u.s you have to fill out your loan application and everything and you get a letter in the mail from the credit bureaus telling you why your credit score is not perfect. Yep. And all those credit scoring models are based on predictive models. So adverse action, GDPR, all these regulations are all targeting, you know, making sure that organizations that are using models are doing in a, doing so in a way that's not discriminatory, mm -hmm. that's not uh, unfair, that isn't, uh, you know, and so on. So, but, Yeah, but also it's, if, if a decision is made, then it's, I mean, the, the algorithm can spit out the exact reasoning and um, yeah exactly you need to have that transparency it turns out that's kind of a hard thing to do mm. uh, it's one of the things that that we spend a fair bit of time on uh, at data robots so we have a feature in the product called prediction explanations yeah uh, that does exactly that because everybody needs it yeah. uh, even if you're not in one of those regulated industries if you want to build a model and have it sort of justify it to your business stakeholders they're gonna ask you how does it work yeah and they don't mean what's the structure of the model and what's the mathematical, you know, how did you set your hyperparameters? That's not what they mean. They mean, I know client X, Y, Z, and my income, you know, my commission depends on what happens with that client. What does your model do to my client and yeah. why? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, being able to explain things in a really transparent way. It's, it's critical. You shouldn't need an AI to understand how AI works, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> or to explain itself. Exactly. Now, you, your title is GM of Banking, and you explained that uh, it used to be like a technical pre-sales, but really you're data science, data scientist doing sales. But you know, what, what's a bit more about exactly what you do? Yeah, so it turns out, so maybe you can guess. the As we go into clients, right, what, where, whether it's uh, – banking or insurance or manufacturing or retail or fintech or logistics or whatever, mm -hmm. right? They almost always ask what, ask the same question. Can you guess what it is? I, I've been at a conference in Vegas for yeah. three days and so no, I'm, yeah, I'm not, so. I mean, you know, they're probably asking how can you help me to be, make more money or be a better business or gain more customers or, or maybe they just simply ask you, what do you do? What they always ask is, what's everybody else doing? Ah, of course. It's crazy. Course, Every time, without course. fail. <laughs> uh, what, are the, what are my competitors yeah, doing? Yeah, so that I'm making sure that I'm not missing out. Yeah, and that's code for we have no idea what we should be doing. <laughs> and we don't want to fall behind, yeah. right? So, you know, what are the things that motivate people? Fear is a big one. Yeah. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of that going around because nobody understands what it is. Uh, and, you know, everybody's kind of hearing a lot about it. And so my role in, is specific to the banking space. Uh, and what I do is try and make it, make it easier for banks to understand what they need to be doing, how they need to be doing it, kind of what order they need to tackle it in uh, from a high level, from a market level, kind mm -hmm. of a, a, a spokesman kind of for the, for the product in that sense. And then also on a customer by customer basis, kind of making sure that, boots on the ground, things are going well. So mm -hmm. I own the, the vertical for, for Data Robot. Now, um, I've been at a Workday conference in, at the Mandalay Bay, and you, but you were in Vegas today too. So it was an ideal opportunity for us to meet up face to face. So what was the conference that you were at? Or what was it called and what were you speaking about? Yeah, InsureTech is uh, over at the MGM. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these hotels are just monstrosities. Right? Oh, and, <laughs> and there's right. like half a dozen, I mean, there's, there's 50 conferences going on every day, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I did a talk with uh, Shatsudru Sengupta. He's uh, uh, also used to be a data robot. He's since started up a, a, an insurance company mm -hmm. called Halos Insurance, uh, which is pretty cool. So he and I were speaking together, uh, and we were essentially talking about how to 
become AI driven. Yeah. So whether you're a big uh, kind of established company or you're a startup and you're just trying to get started, what are the things you need to keep in mind and, and how do you need to do it? So kind of a nuts and bolts, kind of what do you want to do in a very practical way? That's what we tried to do. Sure. Do you know if they filmed it? They did film it, actually. Okay. Well, if you send me uh, the link and if it's publicly available, I can uh, include that talk in, in the article that will host this okay. video. Yeah, great. Because why not, you, you know, uh, yeah. if it's available. Sure. And um, look, in Australia, we've had the Royal Banking Commission because of the fraud uh, mm. inside of banks and insurance companies. And this is not anti-money laundering or fraud from customers. This is fraud by the banks. So, it, yeah. you know, some of the insurance companies are charging dead people <laughs> for life insurance. And uh, <laughs> it's been a real wake-up call that um, some of these uh, businesses are just not um, honest and the government's not clamping down. Mm. But, um, I mean, can, I, have you got companies that are using your technologies to make sure they're keeping themselves honest, not just making sure that they're adhering to anti-money anti laundering uh, legislation and protecting mm. against fraud and security and that sort yep. of thing? There's a lot of stuff going on in that space. Uh, the I'm big, sure in America too. Right? Yeah, the, the big Wells Fargo news story with the, the account reps opening accounts for people who didn't authorize it, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a global uh, problem. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on like that. One place where organizations are doing a lot there is in the trade surveillance space. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm running a, uh, a trading desk, like a sell side type trading desk, I have to watch my traders, right? So they have authority to to place trades and so on. And we've heard where they've, you know, some traders have uh, traded billions of dollars famously and co cost a lot of money. Lost mountains and mm. mountains of money, right, exactly. So, so your technology can help to monitor all of that and, and uh, make sure that companies keep their employees honest and themselves. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea is, uh, so if you think about machine learning, machine learning is essentially taking the data that you have uh, and letting the machine learn the patterns in the data so that you can predict the future. Uh, so that could be anything from trade surveillance to fraud to credit risk to, you know, which employees are going to leave uh, the company, you know, like employee attrition. Sure. And, and, and some of those things that could be employees that are taking secrets or being sure. t uh, headhunted for different roles. You might not want to lose an employee. Yeah, uh, the, the governments, federal, uh, you know, not just the U.S., but governments all over the place mm -hmm. are, are interested in things like, you know, uh, insider threats and, uh, you know, the, the whole, the, there's a whole kind of line of work there. So. This must be a growing business for data robot. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> and look, I'm, I'm going to have links to your site and other things sure. you do, but I mean, you're the GM of banking, but what are the other, um, sec, you know, the other parts of your business that are yeah. headed, up, headed up by other people? Just the quick yeah. version. Yeah. The, the nice thing is that uh, data robots are not a vertical specific tool. Mm -hmm. So I think banking is probably our biggest. We also focus in the insurance space. Uh, it's InsurTech this week. Yep. Uh, manufacturing, uh, telecom, like, uh, you know, that, that sector, Telcos, transportation. Yeah, and fintech. I think those are probably the main ones. Yeah. Oh, healthcare. Of course. Uh, of course, of course yeah. healthcare. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've, we've got um, probably four or five GMs at the moment. We've actually got four or five open recs for, yeah. for new GMs. Okay, uh, so if people so. are watching and they're in, into data and data science and AI and machine learning, <laughs> they should check out your website and if they're skilled enough, they might get a job. Yeah, well, I mean, we've... I think we hired 12 people last week. Okay. Um, so, like I said, I joined in 2015, April. Yeah. And I was number 38, and, uh, and we're passing 500 yeah. now. So, you so. cannot you cannot confirm or deny that it's a growing area, but it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, um, exactly. Uh, you recently released an ebook on the five AI solutions every chief risk officer needs. Yep. I'll have a link to that ebook, which is yep. available for free download after free registration. But just can you briefly go over the five modules, let people uh, have a bit of a yeah. taste, and they can go and download it and read some more for themselves? Oh, let's see if I can remember them. Okay, the first one is anti money laundering. Mm -hmm. uh, the government. So, uh, how much detail do you want? Just uh, a, a nutshell, yeah. Okay, just yeah. Because it'll let people go and have a look, but just give yep. us the headline. Yep. So yeah. uh, banks are required to monitor transactions in all parts of their business mm -hmm. for potential money laundering activity. And the way they do it today is hugely inefficient. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of people investigating potential alerts. Uh, machine learning can reduce that dramatically. Yeah. So I that's mean, the just first In one. Australia, we had the Commonwealth Bank, and they were... Um, which is one of our biggest banks, and there was like 12,000 instances where people were, uh, criminals were putting money up to $20,000 into ATMs. Nice. And uh, the bank, just like, we didn't know. I mean, they desperately need your technology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. there's a huge opportunity there. 
Uh, fraud is the next one. Mm -hmm. That's a, a very, very low hanging fruit. So there's yep. tons of different kinds of fraud. Uh, deposit fraud, application fraud, point of sale, kind of transactional fraud, mm -hmm. wire transfer fraud. Al Capone would never have lasted a minute in, in 2018. Right? Yeah, <laughs> forget about <laughs> it, right? So fraud's a big one. Yeah. Uh, model risk. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that um, monitoring the models that you build to make sure that they're performing as you expect, yep. uh, documenting them and so on. Uh, it's a it's a big one that, that all banks are interested in because mm -hmm. regulators require them to be. Yeah. Uh, loss forecasting. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's predicting uh, the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, crystal ball, right? How yeah. much am I going to lose? How, what are my credit losses going to be? Uh, so CECL, IFRS, D, you know, IRS nine, uh, DFAS, those kinds of things are regulations that require banks to estimate the amount of risk on their books. Uh, and the better they do it, the more effectively they can run the business. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the next one. And then the last one's kind of a catch-all for kind of the loan quality process. So sure. risk we call it targeted risk review. Yeah. Uh, the basic idea there is that if there are places in my process that tend to inter introduce slowdowns, bottlenecks, uh, errors, quality problems, uh, concentration risk, you know, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of places where if you're going to effectively manage the the book of business that you have mm. from a from a business level, from a high level, you need the analytics underlying it. Yeah. Well, we had a thing called the global financial crisis from bad loan books uh, ten yeah. years ago. <laughs> so, right. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it was very. It's a very. Uh, timely thing and look i mean it's it's incredible to think it's been 10 years and i guess some of the tools are only really maturing now or or they're in there you know they've matured but it's taken yeah. a while for it to, to really get there they're becoming more accessible mm. right so the 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 models and tools that are out there today very few of them were invented in the last five ten years yeah. right uh, I mean, some banks are still using uh, core systems that are 40 years old. Yeah, totally. Unbelievable. Totally. Yeah. But the, the problem is the people that are required to build those solutions and the time and cost associated with doing it have, have been so high mm. that, you know, that banks just can't build all the kinds of things that they need in order to take full advantage of their data. So tools are making it more accessible. And a data robot kind of started that whole automation uh, sure. wave in the machine learning space. Do you know much about uh, your business in Australia, how, how it's going? So we do have an office in Australia. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a good kind of core there. I think we're focusing in the banking space there, yeah. although we do have some customers in other other places. Sadly, we don't really talk about which That's customers okay. yeah. we're working but you've with. You've got industries, on. you mentioned healthcare, but, and you know, yeah, I mean, absolutely. whatever you're doing here, you'll, you'd want to be replicating there and I guess around the world. Yeah, in fact, I'll be in Australia the second week in November. So okay. Well, we should uh, catch up again. Yeah, absolutely. Are you coming for a conference or just to meet with clients? Or? Uh, meeting with clients. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, spend a week. Got to do it. <laughs> yeah, got to. So <laughs> I'll be in Sydney and Melbourne. It's a beautiful country. I love it there. I've been once before. Well, um, we we'll welcome you back with open arms. <laughs> So um, as we get towards the end of the interview, I always like to ask about the future. And mm. you know, obviously, if it was so easy to appear, I mean, I, you know, part of what you do is to see the future. But, um, you know, what do you think the that work day, uh, work day, that's the conference. I mean, what do you think a data robot will be like in 2018? You know, how, how much yeah. more advanced will AI be? I mean, sure. AI is already programming AI, isn't it? But I yeah. mean, where do you see... Um, the future will will data scientists have little chips implanted in their brain so they can become super walking supercomputers i hope so <laughs> i'll be the first one in line to get that implant that'd be pretty good huh um let's see where we're we gonna go uh i think what you see today as you look at the market is massive fragmentation mm. Uh, you know, you have tiny companies that are starting up and even bigger companies that are doing kind of little bits of, of stuff. Mm. Um, you have some big companies like SAS, for example, is a, a company that kind of has pieces of the pie all along the way. So data prep and modeling and deployment and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, they're an example of a company that kind of stopped innovating, you know, like five, ten years ago, something like that. Of course, that's my opinion. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm slightly biased. But, of course. <laughs> but uh, there are lots of really kind of exciting and innovative players in, across that whole spectrum. I think the next five years is going to be kind of like the the era of integration, right? So we've got to figure out how to get all those pieces put together so that organizations can take advantage of like Hadoop, uh, mm -hmm. which n lots of people have, but nobody really uses a you know, effectively, mm, yet. Properly, I guess, yeah. uh, You know, all the way from Hadoop on the data side, all the way over to, you know, deployment solutions and visualization, things like, you know, Tableau and Click and, and some of those kinds of things. So so we've got to get that, that integration done in a more seamless and effective way. I think that's what's going to be happening in the next three or four years. 
And my second last question is always simply to ask if you could please share the best advice you've ever received to help you get where you are today. Oh, um, so there's a, a man named Bill Kahn at, uh, he's at Bank of America now. Mm -hmm. and we were travelers together and uh, he is an avid communicator. Uh, so I really respect Bill. Bill's a, a great guy, mm -hmm. statistician yep. like me. Yep. Uh, but he, he realized in his career, and he passed this on to me, that how you're able to talk about stuff, uh, you know, the technical work that you do, the, the importance of it, if you're able to communicate it effectively, you're hugely more valuable. Mm. That a, a great communicator that has some technical capability is hugely valuable. Uh, and I've certainly found that to be to be true in my career. In fact, the better you are at talking about the technical technical work that you do, the less technical work you end up doing, <laughs> right? Because there's a massive shortage of people that can communicate effectively. Sure. Uh, particularly in the software engineering, data science, machine learning type spaces. So I would invest heavily there. Yeah. Uh, and a big piece of that is empathy. Mm -hmm. So if I can put myself in your shoes and understand not just kind of what you know and what you'll understand, but also what you care about, mm -hmm. why it matters to you and so on, then my effectiveness as a communicator just gets better and better. So weirdly, the data science tip has nothing at all to do with data science. <laughs> and and, the, and the, you know, for that to be true, you would have to be a great interview subject, which it turns out you are. Ha! Well, there you go. <laughs> That's what I tell my wife. <laughs> so what's your final message to IT Wire viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners around the world? I think the, the answer that people are looking for is just do it, yeah. right? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I went into a client the other day, a few, few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, they said, hey, Greg, we love Data Robot, we love your technology, but we need to finish our data warehouse before we, we get started down the machine learning path. Well, I've been at this for a while, and mm -hmm. I've never seen a finished data warehouse. <laughs> I right. don't think they exist, yeah. right? They, yeah. It's not a thing. It's like digital transformation. It's continuous oh, improvement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a ne never-ending job. You've got yeah. to start somewhere. So, exactly. Yeah. I think people want to do the Big Bang solution. They mm -hmm. want the 99% the solution. Yeah. Uh, but it, it but never works out like that. It never does. Yeah. So what we always advise people is, look, build the 70% solution. Yeah. Do it in three weeks and see if it's a thing. Or three months or yeah. whatever it takes. Yeah. But yeah, 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 get the tools you need, yeah. put a solution out there, and you'll know if it's gonna work yeah. very quickly. There's that famous saying about eat the elephant one mouthful at a time. You can't exactly. do it in one go. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's what it is. Don't 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 wait for your data to be perfect. Yeah. Don't wait for your IT structure to be ready. Yeah. Don't wait for your cloud uh, you know, your cloud strategy to be finished. Don't wait for you know the next merger to happen. Don't wait for your data warehouse to finish. It's almost always the case that you can build something that will add significant value to the organization with the data that you have at hand right now today. Uh, and so that's what I would tell people. And once Go you see that, that success, then you can start working on other parts of the business. Because you'll never be ready, you'll never be finished. When you're ready and finished, you'll probably be dead. <laughs> exactly. And there is a concept of momentum, yeah, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A small win will build huge political capital in the organization. Uh, it'll prime the pumps for change management. It'll it'll procure resources and funding for the next project. So there there really is a concept of of momentum. Well, Greg Michelson, General Manager of Banking at Data Robot, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to catching up with you in Australia. My pleasure. Thank you very much.